considering the impact of implementing these projects and uh, the low cost of implementing these projects, have you thought about how to uh, distribute the learnings from these types of projects as well as other projects to other campuses uh, in the area and around the world? Well, what we started to do is, as part of the Energy Initiative, there is a portion of the Energy Initiative website where we've started documenting some of the results from some of these particular projects. So one of the things we're doing is essentially uh, putting this in some detail on the website so that people from other universities can see it. Secondly, um, uh, a number of people from the facilities department uh, have met with their counterparts at other universities and shared some of this information. I've done the same thing talking to faculty members who are interested in, in setting up uh, 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 energy task force similar to the uh, task force which we have here on campus. And it amazes a lot of these people how receptive we found the people from facilities to uh, and from other parts of the administration to actually cooperate with us and to move forward on this. this uh, in many cases, the faculty at other universities haven't even thought of that. They're just talking to faculty and you, you can't get very far without engaging the people who are going to have to actually make the changes. Great. So similar to us distributing our learnings from what we're doing on campus, uh, there are a lot of other universities that are doing uh, similar greening projects on their own campuses. Right. Have we um, thought about how best to share information from outside universities to implement projects on our own campus? Well, one of the ways we're doing it, as I said, is the people from facilities um, and from our environmental health office have met with some of their counterparts at other universities uh, to try and, one, to share information about what really makes sense. But secondly, there's a group of primarily research universities who found that they have really unique kinds of requirements. They, they have much larger number of laboratories on campus um, uh, and they take a proportionally larger amount of the energy. And the question is what kind of standards should they be setting for those kinds of research spaces? So that's really an ongoing process to try and determine what makes sense. There are, I think you may have heard the, these LEAD, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design uh, Awards, which buildings have, but they don't quite apply to the laboratory spaces yet. We really need to find out what makes sense uh, on those particular kinds of spaces. That's one part of it. Another part is all, certainly all the student exchanges we've had with students from other campuses here in the country. We even had exchanges with students you know, from other foreign countries as part of, we have a program with Portugal, another one with Singapore, a number of other ones like that. Lots of learning gets done both with knowledge going both ways between the students collaborating on these kinds of projects. That's great. Uh, so along the lines of student involvement, mm -hmm. uh, one of the great aspects of these projects is that students have been so actively involved and uh, have been learning a lot from the projects that they've been working on. Can you talk a little bit about what students specifically have been doing and how you felt they've learned through the campus screening projects that they've been working on? Um, that's, that's a great question. And in fact, when we started this, the students were really sort of impatient to get us started. They were way ahead of us in the beginning that they wanted to do some things and to start out some particular projects. Um, and in fact, they have been really enthusiastic uh, participants in many of the projects that we have done. Uh, for example, we have a very modest amount of money from the Energy Initiative which we can give to students who on their own want to set up a project and uh, uh, run a particular project. So for example, one student, a group of students have set up a, uh, a uh, map. So if you look on the, on the internet site, you can find out which buildings use the largest amount of energy per square foot of floor space. Um, other groups one group is looking at what can they do to get people to use more of the revolving doors so they don't just use the push through doors but use revolving doors. And in that case, they did a series, typical MIT, they did a series of signs of different sizes and found there was a critical size that you had to get to. And at that point, people would start to pay attention. Now the sign had to say, please use the door. On the other side, typical MIT, it said, this is a much, how much energy you'd save if you, uh -huh. if you use the revolving door rather than, than that. Another uh, ba basically undergraduate group has been doing a, a dorm energy competition where every year they 
do a competition for about two months, find out which dorm could uh, reduce the amount of energy consumption by the largest amount. Mm -hmm. And the interesting uh, part of this is the students themselves figured out what the prize would be. And the prize for the dorm that did the best as far as energy saving, the prize is uh, about $10,000, which they could use to put in some more energy saving features in wow. the dormitory to, t to encourage them to go further in this. And I've talked with some of the dormitory groups about that. And again, they're really very, very gung ho about uh, getting some of these kind of projects underway and, uh, uh, and showing that, in fact, they can save a substantial amount of energy. So it's a great way to get the students involved. In many cases, we have faculty and staff involved with the students and part of our URR program and the like. So lots of learning uh, opportunities. In some cases, some of the, some of the classes uh, have taken on these projects as part of the, the course projects uh, where they've focused on a particular aspect of the campus energy initiative and, and in many cases have come up with some very useful uh, results which we can, uh, we can apply to still further things we can do. So Professor Glicksman, uh, the, the students are doing a lot of projects on campus which are focused towards uh, one narrow aspect of uh, solving environmental sustainability issues, um, global warming, et cetera. Can you tell us a little bit about how those small projects are being perceived by the students and faculty to uh, be solutions to the larger environmental issues that uh, uh, we're facing? Well, I think the people who are in the energy game realize there is no one silver bullet. This is not an area where sort of like the Manhattan Project or putting someone on the moon, there is just one way to do it. And if we come up with this wonderful breakthrough technology, our problems are solved. I think most of us who have been in this field and are thoughtful realize it's really a combination of things that we're going to have to do uh, if we're going to be successful. Uh, and the area where we've been doing most of our emphasis in the campus energy task force is obviously on the, on the consumption side rather than the supply side. Um, and w when you look at it in a larger context, first of all, MIT, most of the energy in the CO2 is a result of operations within buildings. Transportation, other than air transportation, mm -hmm. is not a big deal, and obviously there's no industrial component here. Uh, if you look at, it, at the U.S. as a whole, um, about 40% of our primary energy is energy consumed in buildings, residential plus commercial buildings. Over three quarters of all electricity is consumed in the U.S. is consumed in buildings for heating, cooling, lighting, and functions of that sort. Uh, and as I said, there is not one solution, but in fact, when we bring a number of these smaller things, whether it's revolving doors, whether it's fume hoods, or whether it's better lighting systems, we bring all of these things together, there's certainly a potential to reduce our energy consumption our demand side in buildings by probably as much as 50 percent. That's going right. to go a long way towards solving the problem. But again, it involves this integration of lots of separate acts that people can do. And I think a number of our students start to understand that that's the approach to the problem. 